Welcome, Dr. Peter Selby. Uh, we have a few questions to ask you. We have a series of four questions to ask you um, with, around the theme of opioid. So my first question to you is, how serious a problem is prescription opioid dependence? In Ontario, prescription opioid dependence is the primary opioid that people are using when they're coming into treatment nowadays. And that trend started about 10 years ago, and it continues. So prescription opioids have replaced heroin as the reason why people are seeking treatment. That's one thing to look at, one indicator. Uh, whether they're coming into a methadone program, whether they're coming into an addictions program to get detoxified, prescription opioids are a, an important uh, uh, reason why people are running into trouble. We're getting more and more referrals from pain clinics where patients are running into trouble with their prescription medication, which, which was supposed to be the solution to their problem, is now either worsening their problem or has added a new problem uh, to, to the mix. Uh, we know that in Ontario there have been many more deaths that have occurred uh, because of opioids uh, than ever before. Uh, we know that use of opioids has gone on ex exponentially in the last uh, 10 years, uh, primarily prescription opioids. And um, the other thing that one indicator we have is that the number of babies being born in hospitals uh, where their mothers were taking opioids and therefore the babies developed withdrawal has also gone up exponentially in the last five years. So by all indicators, clinical indicators and use indi indicators, it appears it's a problem. Uh, and then in all of Canada, Ontario seems to be the province with the highest utilization of opioids. Uh, and after the, the U.S. and uh, 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 we are one of the biggest uh, consumers of prescription opioids. Dr. Selby, how can we prevent opioid dependence? So prevent opioid dependence, there have been many uh, you know, aspects and, and strategies tried. A complete abstinence kind of approach and prohibitionistic approach leads to other problems in two dimensions. One is you'll end up with many more illicit drugs being used and opioids being used. And secondly, you'll end up under-treating pain uh, with, if there's not enough access to opioids. On the other hand, if you have a, a, a policy framework or a climate where there aren't any rules and there aren't any checks and balances, then you'll end up with many more addictions to prescription opioids. So from a preventative perspective, there are several dimensions which have to happen. You have to happen at a policy level so that the prescription medications are uh, differentially available so that the less potent ones are much more available. Then we can talk about the prescribers on how they prescribe them and whom they prescribe them to for how long. Uh, an educated public uh, is also very important to pay attention to what can happen when uh, opioids are misused. And so having a, a, a framework whereby we can maximize the benefits for opioids, for the example, the treatment of pain or cancer pain or people who are dying, uh, or even non-malignant pain, uh, uh, with, with these risks that if there, there aren't the appropriate uh, um, balances of, or, and checks and balances in place that you'll land up with an addictive disorder. So prevention it becomes everybody's job and it's not just the single, you know, it's not just the physician, it's not, not the pharmacist, it's not the patient, and it's not the government, it's everybody's duty to make sure that this works well. Can you talk a bit about treatment? So treatment is really when, at one level, when prevention has failed. And uh, treatment, again, looks at several aspects. So when, when we are treating people, one of the first things in early phases is helping the person understand that there is a problem for which uh, treatment is available. Uh, in some situations, it's detoxification as the first uh, phase of treatment and simply helping people come off that drug with then additional uh, behavioral support and psychotherapy or psychological support uh, and addiction treatment may be all that's required for that individual. Uh, on the other hand, if it's complex with a more severe addiction or with concurrent pain disorders or concurrent mental, mental health disorders, then maybe switching to a less dangerous form of a prescription medication and a structured framework for treatment might be necessary to stabilize the individual as they acquire other skills to deal with those conditions. So uh, clearly that's how we go into treatment and the medication treatments we have currently available are methadone and uh, buprenorphine. 
uh, in the Canadian landscape that's available for people to use uh, for the treatment of opioid dependence. Last question, Dr. Selby. What is the take-home message you would like to leave us with? The take-home message is that we need to walk a fine balance by making access uh, easy for those who need it, but also having the checks and balances to make sure that we do not inadvertently cause a problem for those who need the medication. Secondly, we should have early recognition of people running into trouble and offer them immediate help to come off the medication. Uh, ignoring it will not make it go away. Uh, doing workarounds or, or, or things like that with the patient will not make it go away. Addressing it with the patient, getting people help is important. And then making sure we have appropriate treatments for prescription drug use. Uh, you know, easier access to medications like buprenorphine, uh, easier access to methadone programs, and less access and less uh, use of the prescription opioids. Uh, will clearly help reduce that and then making sure that in addition to access to these medications there's access to the appropriate counseling that is required to help people lead drug-free lives. Well Dr. Sabin, I want to thank you for your time. You're welcome, thank you.